In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. The second thing is trust in God's love. When you go to speak with God at any moment, not just in the times when you stand to pray, but also when you're sitting right now, when you're sleeping, when you're moving, when you're sad, when you're annoyed, when you're depressed, We want to remember that I'm talking to someone who loves me a lot and wants me to say anything to him, and he will not get upset because I am truly loved. There are many people that do not have this trust. They do not feel their place with God. They do not feel their value with God. They consider themselves as one in six billion. No, no, not at all. Our Lord does not see this number. He sees you alone, as if you are the six billion. He deals with just you. In this moment, he doesn't see anyone but you and does not hear anyone but you. St. Augustine, as a philosopher, said about God, I discovered that you love me as if there is no one in the universe besides me, and it is as if I am the only one on your mind always. Do you understand this? Here he is saying he discovered that he alone is worth the world and it is as if there is no one else. Imagine that someone has a child late in life, and this is their only child. This child will consume their mind and their heart. This is a very weak comparison to to what our relationship with God is. Our Lord was incarnated because of love. He died on the cross because of love. He carries our weaknesses because of love. He put in us his spirit because of love. He gave us his body and blood because of his love. This concept is much greater than what we can imagine. If you believe that God loves you very much, you will find that your prayers will change. It's not important what you are doing in that moment. This is a problem for a lot of people. They make a mistake and then they do not want to pray. When they do something wrong, they feel like they can't pray. They feel like they need to take a shower first. No, no matter what you do, The Lord's love won't change. He's upset because of your actions, but he still loves you as a person in the same way. You are loved as you are, regardless of your actions. If someone knows this, they will run to pray if they committed a crime, because they are sure that our Lord loves them even though they are bad. This part is important. Our Lord does not get disgusted from us. When he said that sin is a division between us and him, he is not the one who placed this division. He's not the one who became disgusted and said, get away from me. No, no. By committing the crime, I'm the one who placed the barrier and distanced myself from him. His position, though, did not change at all. When our Lord came to dwell among mankind, there was no one who was good or just. In our worst condition, he came to us and did more than we could ever expect. One of the things that really strengthens prayer is trust in God's love. Even the words, Our Father. The Saint Embaruis said that when he began to pray the Our Father prayer, he said, Our Father, and stopped, and contemplated those two words for seven hours. He could not continue. He just said, Our Father, and was stunned by these words. He became very happy and did not want to say anything else. He could not believe it. The Lord is my Father, and I am talking to him like this. If he is my Father... Then what else do I need? What shall I fear? What does anything else in the world matter if the Lord of all is mine, my Father? Trust in God's love makes prayer enjoyable. Without trust in God's love, prayer becomes burdensome. There are levels to this enjoyment. Paul says some bold words in Ephesians chapter 3. He says that, may may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. He said, I write this to you so that you may know what I taste. He was writing from prison, which w- which has four walls, it smells bad, there are loud sounds, and it's disgusting inside. He is in a different world. Why? He writes, I bow down to pray, and I am in a different world, and am very happy and satisfied. I tell you all, you do, you do not taste what I taste. You are outside, you eat, you drink, you sleep in your homes and are happy. What are you happy with? he asks. You are to be pitied. 
I wish you would taste what I taste. But where is he? He is in a Roman prison, the worst place in the world. He said, No, not at all. That's not the situation. I say, Dear Lord, let them taste a piece of what I taste. Comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. God does far more than what we ask or can imagine. He goes above and beyond our requests. In in Paul's past, maybe he was not able to say, God loves me. Paul, you cursed God. Despite this, he now is able to say that God loves him. He was one of the people who killed one of God's most precious children, Stephen. Despite that, Paul did not doubt for a moment that God loves him. He was against the early church, but still, Paul knows that God loves him and died on the cross for him. When he prays, to him prayer is enjoyable, because he is sure that God loves him. I'm not telling you all about how to love God. I am talking about having confidence that God looks upon you with love. Even in the worst times in your, of your life, God looks upon you with love. There are people, for example, that think when Christ looked at Peter on the day of the trial, that it was a look of being upset with Peter. That's because their perception is warped. They think that God is holding a stick. I think that in that moment, Jesus looked at Peter. When Peter denied him three times, he looked at him as he did before, which was full of love. My beloved, don't ever doubt that I still love you. Don't ever think that I am upset from you. I am upset from the sin. I am not upset from you at all. Don't ever say, I am the reason and I did this. Leave behind this kind of talk. I know what I am doing. I came to be crucified and I am waiting for you to be the first to arrive on the day of resurrection. You are still precious as the most valuable disciple. When Peter prays after this, there is no way he can forget that look. The look that is full of love in the moment of strife. So of course, he would not want to stop praying. Peter may have thought, you love me in this moment. It makes sense that you would love me when I'm preaching or serving or performing miracles. But do you love me when I curse you and deny you three times? The Lord responds with, I still love you. Confidence in God's love is what opens the way to prayer. This is why people who don't feel that God loves them are not able to pray. John the Beloved knew that our Lord loved him. Because of this, he says, we love him because he loved us first. It's not that we love God. He's the one who loves us. When you realize what your value is to God, then you will love to pray. Jesus explained confidence in God's love in many different ways. In Luke 11, he says, Who among you, as a father, when his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, and you will give him a snake? Or when he asks for an egg, you will give him a scorpion? Imagine yourself as a mother or a grandmother, and you're preparing an egg for your son or grandson, and he says to you, please prepare it in this way. You will be happy as you make it for him. Think then about how God would be in this situation. Is it possible that you would ask God for something and he would do something less than what you asked? How? If you as a person who is full of mistakes, and when it comes to your kids and grandchildren, you soften and would give them your eyes, Then what about God, who is the source of all love? What will he do? He goes on to say, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father give? What does does this mean? It means the amount of love that we have for our children is incomparable to the love God has for us. There is no way for us to comprehend our place in God's heart. Because of this, one is at ease when when they pray. They would not be worried at all when they pray. How much more will your father give? Pay attention to what he will give. He will not give eggs or fish or bread, like the examples used. He gives his spirit. This is something we cannot give to our children. I can't give my spirit to my son. God loves me more than I love my son. He gives me his spirit. He doesn't give me something outside of himself. 
it would be easier for him to give me the whole world. That is very cheap to him. Instead, he gives me his spirit. God knows the most valuable thing he has is his spirit. He says, come to me, my child, take from my spirit. St. Paul writes, knowing Christ's love is beyond comprehension. Beyond comprehension. Now, there is a mistake in Arabic when it comes to this part. What's the mistake? The words you know are the opposite of beyond comprehension. In Greek, the phrase means what you can't know. Sometimes they call it knowledge without realizing, meaning I know, and as I grow with God, I will continue to know, but I will never reach the end. There is no way I can reach the end. He says, you taught them your name. Okay, so he taught them. Enough. No, it doesn't end. There is in them the love you loved me with, and I am in them. Love doesn't end. As you continue to grow in your relationship with God, it's not that you love him more, but rather you realize that he loves you more. From the beginning, he loves you very much. You just didn't realize. As you grow, the more you will discover. Wow, am I very valuable? Am I very important? Am I very loved? It says in Romans 8, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If someone is sure of their place with God when they pray, how will they then pray? The third point also pertains to God's love. Some people get annoyed from the, from the prophet's prayers. When I would study Job, there would honestly be times when I would want to say to him, it's inappropriate for you to say that. For example, Jonah, he says some words that were inappropriate, and he was a prophet. How could he be complaining to God? Elijah, for example, became very upset and wouldn't let go of the issue. God persisted and sent, sent to him angels, and he was still stubborn. Elijah said, I want to die, and that's it. Do you know why they did this? They are people that say they, are, they were objecting God. No, not at all. When you, are, when you are like them at their level of love for God, then do as they do. These prophets are sure of their standing with God. They are prophets not because they didn't make mistakes. They did make mistakes, and they are like us. The difference between them and us is that they are, fa they are much farther ahead in their level of God's love. Jonah would blame God for his good qualities. He would say, I know you are kind. What shall I do with your kindness? He would fight with God over his kindness. He would say, I learned that you are merciful. Take me then. He was frustrated by God's good qualities. He was in God's love. God wouldn't be quiet in these times. Here, prayer tastes completely different when you know how much God loves you.